And back with us now is Texas Congresswoman-elect Beth Van Dyne, along with Byron York from the Washington Examiner. We're, we're all a part of history now. This is the longest vote in more than 160 years, it looks like. Congresswoman, what's the exit plan out of this? Even Trump and Mike Pence said stop this vote for McCarthy. Lawmaker Tony Gonzalez says lock the House inside. No one leaves until there's white smoke and a new speaker. What's the exit plan, Congresswoman? Well, I'll tell you, this is not the part of history that I wanted to be a part of. You know, I wanted to be a part of coming back, getting the majority, and being able to actually fulfill the, the promises that we made to our constituents during the campaign that we're going to hold the Biden administration accountable. You know, the next next steps is, look, you've got 90 percent of the Republican conference that's supporting Kevin McCarthy. Um, you've got uh, 19, 20 people who have voted for a handful of candidates the last round. They threw out two names. It's, it's frustrating. I think if you're running for this position, you should have already have come out. You should have announced. It would have been great to hear what your platform was, what your ideas, what your plan. And now we're at the last moments. Um, and okay. all these names are just kind of being thrown out. And, and for those of us who like to be very thoughtful with our votes, to know what we're voting on, uh, we're, we're, we're pushing in the votes, the vote, the rule changes to have 72 hours notice. It's, it's frustrating we're all of a sudden just kind of hearing uh, last minute names thrown out as as speaker. It's By way too. Byron, what do you, so the, what the congresswoman just said, Byron, what do you make of all this? Because there's debate whether or not McCarthy making big concessions and whether or not he's gutting his own power as a speaker. And also there's this, this is what others are saying. It's a really important fight over massive government spending passed in the dead of night at the 11th hour when Congress doesn't read the bill and, and no hearings. What do you say to all this? Well, I think uh, McCarthy already, before the voting started, made a lot of concessions uh, for changes in how the House operates. I mean, a lot of uh, uh, conservatives in the United States are almost traumatized by this $1.7 trillion omnibus that passed on December 23rd. But, you know, 200 House Republicans voted against it. Nine House Republicans voted for it. Seven of them are no longer in the House. They did it on the way out the door. Uh, so uh, Kevin McCarthy is uh, actually wanted uh, the Senate not to pass the bill, to wait until Republicans were in charge of the House and could perhaps cut it down a little bit. Uh, I think right now, the situation right now, the one voice we haven't heard from now is Kevin McCarthy. Uh, and there's no rule that says he can't come out and say something. Uh, and I think it would probably be a good idea to do so right now. Yeah, that's an interesting point because, you know, Congresswoman, uh, U.S. inflation has not turned a, courting, uh, turned a corner yet. That's from the IMF. Uh, IMF. So Americans are hit, getting hit with double whammies of high inf inflation, fueled by government spending, Fed rate hikes, and now tax hikes. You know, it's even, you know, it's getting so bad out there. Congresswoman, we want your reaction to this. Even rapper Cardi B is demanding a stop to what's going on in D.C. Watch this. I went to the supermarket. I'm seeing that everything tripled up. That, like, lettuce was, like, $2 a couple of months ago, and now it's 7 Of course I'm going to say something. I could only imagine what middle-class people or people in the hood think is. I mean, even Cardi B is saying what the heck's going on with D.C. Go ahead, Congresswoman. <laughs> I said, Cardi, you know, Cardi B, welcome to the Republican Party. We've been saying this for the last two years. If you have, if you have um, impunitive fiscal policies that are coming out of the Biden administration that, that demonizes American business, when they've got their fiscal policies that are, are, are attacking our energy industry, this is what you see. We have been warning of, of people of this, that this is exactly what was going to happen for the last two years if you enacted these policies, and they continue to do it. And guess what? We're finally seeing what's happening. Well, on Congresswoman, a daily basis. how does this how does this problem with the House Speaker fight resolve itself? What's going to happen? We're going to have to get a majority. We're going to have to have 218 people or or a majority of those voting. Um, but vote the 20 are not. A... But they're not budging. The hardliners are not budging, Congresswoman. I understand that there's, there has been negotiations and discussions happening all day today. Uh, what I hear is that those are moving. They're, they're progressing. It's going in a positive direction. The okay. fact is, is that, look, we all want to have a conservative speaker. I come from a conservative district. I have had conservative voting record. What I, I'm really worried about the spending that we've been doing, the lack of, of attention at the border, the lack of attention in inflation, what we're doing with our, our, our international okay. policies. So I'm wanting a speaker that's very conservative. And the fact is, is that there are stop gaps being put in place that if Kevin McCarthy is not that conservative speaker, okay. he needs five people to be able to call him out All right, on that. They're but now moving. 
we got breaking news. They're moving on an 11th, an 11th vote uh, for McCarthy for House Speaker. And this, again, we're in historic times. We haven't seen this since 1860. Your final word, Byron York. Well, there is an intense fear among the 200 Republicans uh, who have been voting for McCarthy that if they give in to the demands of the 20, there'll be no end to it. There'll never be an end to it. The next time there's a significant vote, uh, a group will, will hold things up and make all sorts of demands. Uh, okay. I do think that uh, members of the 200 uh, might want to start saying to these rebels, look, you need to produce a real candidate and get pledges from members of the House who say that if Kevin McCarthy uh, withdraws or is out of the race, they will then vote for that candidate. Right now, this is a real pig in a poke situation uh, from the rebels. Got it. Congresswoman Van Dyne and Byron York, thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's good to see you, you both.